On New Year's Eve, the Sun released an X5 class solar flare, one of the strongest flares of the current solar cycle, which shocked the entire planet. The Sun may appear calm and steady from a distance. When you look closer, though, you'll see that our star is actually in a constant state of flux. It switches between a consistent sea of fire and a chaotic jumble of distorted plasma over time. The Sun is beginning to enter a more active time for flares that cause solar storms that can impact the Earth. NASA has issued a warning about an upcoming solar storm that could potentially lead to months-long disruption of the Internet, causing what is being called an Internet Apocalypse. A severe solar storm can damage the undersea communication cables, leading to interruption of long-distance connectivity and can cause serious harm to Earth's surface. How the 2025 solar flare affect us? Can we survive it? Join us today to find out. Despite looking peaceful from Earth, the Sun is actually a center of immense activity. Solar storms, which are intense outbursts of energy and charged particles, are a common occurrence from the hot, active star at the center of our solar system. Let's first understand, what are solar flares? These are among the biggest known explosions in the solar system. The Sun is built up by magnetic energy. The solar outburst occurs when there is an intense burst of that magnetic energy. This throws off whole waves of energy that move and travel outward. Of course, it affects Earth and other celestial bodies in our solar system. And when these electromagnetic waves interact with the magnetic field of our home planet, a few things happen. Beautiful auroras, sometimes referred to as the northern and southern lights, can be produced by geomagnetic storms caused by these particles colliding with Earth's magnetic field. However, they may also be a threat to communication networks, power grids, and satellites. Solar storms can vary in strength. Some are mild and have minimal impact, while others might be strong enough to disrupt Earth's ionosphere and magnetosphere, resulting in serious harm to technology. A systematic method for classifying and ranking the intensity of space weather phenomena, particularly geomagnetic storms, is the, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Space Weather Scales. This scale offers a clear framework for understanding the possible effects of these astronomical disturbances on Earth and its technological infrastructure much like the scales used for tornadoes or hurricanes. With the use of this scale, scientists hopes to ensure that during major solar occurrences, people receive timely information and clear warnings, enabling prevention and planning. Based on the possible effects on power systems, satellite operations and other technological systems, as well as the visibility of auroras at specific geographic latitudes, the scale goes from 1, small, to 5, extreme. The classification of the flare is based on the intensity of the explosion. The most powerful are X-class flares, followed by M, C, and B-class. A-class flares are the smallest. These flares may last for several minutes and can be seen as bright flashes in a specific area of the sun. The solar cycle, an approximately 11-year cycle of solar activity driven by the sun's magnetic field, is linked to these eruptions. What causes the solar cycle? The sun experiences solar minimum, a low time in solar activity, solar maximum, and vice versa about every 11 years. A solar minimum is a time when there are the fewest sunspots, which results in reduced solar activity. Solar maximum is the period when the number of sunspots is highest, bringing more frequent solar activity and a greater likelihood of solar flares. Now let's go back in time to the 19th century to explore the largest solar storm ever recorded, the Carrington event, 
and its impact on Earth. On September 1st, Richard C. Carrington, an English astronomer, is examining a group of sunspots through dark filters that protect his eyes. Around 11 a.m., he sees a sudden flash of intense white light from the area of the sunspots. The flare was a major coronal mass ejection, a burst of magnetized plasma from the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona. According to NASA spaceflight, it usually takes CMEs several days to reach Earth. But in 17.6 hours, the CME traversed over 90 million miles between the Sun and Earth and unleashed its force on our planet. In North America and as far south as Panama in Central America, the night sky lights up like daylight. It is another wave of even brighter auroras. Thinking that the Sun has rised on a cloudy morning, people started reading newspapers by the light and gold miners in the Rocky Mountains get up at 1 a.m. and prepare coffee and bacon. It was so strong that it briefly covered the sun and in a few of hours produced dazzling purple, green, and red lights to burst throughout the sky. However, even crazier things are happening. Sensors measuring variations in Earth's magnetic field are malfunctioning, with needles pointing in the wrong direction. Electricity spikes disrupt the global telegraph networks, making it impossible for anyone to send a message. March of 1989, over a century later, a strong solar flare erupted from the sun. Not long afterward, our planet was directly hit by another outburst that released a billion tons of gas. There was a 12-hour blackout for locals. August, just two months later, saw the explosion of another solar flare that was headed straight for Earth. It was even bigger than the one that occurred in March. It left Quebec in the dark again and damaged microchips all across the world. And now, there's growing concern that in 2025, there will be another strong solar storm. Massive blackouts and power outages could result from it an entire community's internet connectivity could be shut off for months or even years. We rely on electricity far more now than we did in the past, not just with regard to the devices in our homes, but also in terms of hospitals and other places where technology is a necessity. Even food requires electricity since we need it to be stored. It is necessary for daily tasks, including communication and work. On Earth, a solar storm with the same intensity as the Carrington event might result in damages worth trillions of dollars. We could not fully recover from anything like that for up to 10 years. That way, humankind might be set back by nearly 20 years if it happens. Our satellites could be harmed by all those particles exploding. We could lose communications that way, not a GPS, TV, or internet we would be dealing with extremely powerful radiation. People might experience certain long-term issues as a result of that. A team of dozen scientists gathered in 2019 as the sun was getting closer to the end of its 11-year magnetic activity cycle for predicting the next peak. Now, a few years into the sun's resurgence, it's becoming clear that the official prediction from the panel convened by NASA missed the mark. The sun's activity has already exceeded expectations, hitting levels not seen in 20 years, and solar maximum might occur within this year, several months ahead of the expected timeline. The difference emphasizes the necessity for more accurate sun observations. It might also indicate that there are unidentified elements controlling the ionized gas dynamo that is churning and producing the sun's magnetic field. Can we prepare for a solar flare? Protecting power grids, underwater cables, and satellites from overloading is the first action we can take. We can also search for ways to forecast these kinds of storms in the future. NASA is working on a system called DAGGER that uses new technologies, such artificial intelligence, to better predict solar flares up to 30 minutes in advance. Although massive solar storms are uncommon, we still need to be ready for potential space weather effects, which could peak in a few years. 
Because space weather effects can be unexpected, we need to be creative. Unexpected atmospheric heating in 2022 resulted in several satellite losses. It is expected that throughout 2024, solar activity and CMEs will increase as the sun progresses through solar cycle 25. In the meantime, we can look forward to spectacular auroras that should come as we near the 2025 solar maximum. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to share your thoughts and questions about this video in the comment section. Also, if you are new here, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you next time.